Thank you very much for staying with us. Now let's begin with the unholy alliance between politics and religion regarding the 2023 elections. At the conclusion of the elections, it appears religion continues to interfere with politics. The spiritual director of the Adoration Ministry in Enugu, Nigeria, Reverend Father Ejike Mbaka, has warned those attacking him, especially on social media, that he will keep talking. Father Mbaka insists that social media cannot control the voice of prophecy while referring to Peter Obi's loss in the 2023 presidential election. Father Mbaka said a lot of noise on social media about someone does not mean the majority will win the votes. Gentlemen, I mean, we thought uh, Father Mbaka was done talking for a moment. It looks like we're still here. No, he's not the sort of person that you can gag. Mm. Even the, the Catholic Church has tried its best. Beyond expelling him, I don't think you can stop Father uh, Mbaka uh, from getting involved in politics, from speaking his mind. And uh, he clearly is not loved mm. by supporters of Peter Mba. And the feeling is mutual. He also does not love them. And um, the more you abuse him, the more he steps out to say those things that you won't enjoy listening to. And he told us that Obi will never be president of Nigeria and that um, uh, having people make so much noise about you on social media does not guarantee you electoral victory. Uh, it's um, not the sort of thing that obedience won to hear. In fact, they've told us that Peter will be actually won the election, which, in my view, will amount to the eighth wonder of the world for a man who couldn't win a single Nigerian state dominated by Muslims. To imagine he can win an election is just um, it's strange to me. This kind of uh, optimism, I know a lot of people in politics are extremely optimistic. But um, Peter Obi did not win the election. So I've said it repeatedly, a gun to my neck, I will say it. He didn't win the election. And if things stayed the way they were before the election, he would still not be able to win. He won't have 25% in enough states to take him to Azurok. And he will not win enough states. Peter Obi is the Southern version of Muhammad Buhari mm. pre-2015. Muhammad Buhari, before 2015, dominated the elections in northern Nigeria. But he couldn't win the election. He contested three times and failed. And the... Uh, People talk about the usual 12 million votes waiting for Buhari. The only time Buhari didn't get 20 million, uh, 12 million votes, largely from northern Nigeria, was when he had to contest against uh, Yaradua. Both of them were from the same state, so the Yaradua defeated him. It, it took a good chunk of what will have gone to him. The framers of the constitution, yes, they were not perfect, but they've made it impossible for you to be president of Nigeria if, you only, if your, your support is not across the board. If you don't have cross-country support, you cannot be president of Nigeria. You know? Uh, what uh, even scored more votes than Obi, yet he could not be president. What even won more states than Obi, yet he could not be president. So this is the, you must have support everywhere. And this last election has shown us that you don't even need to win every state. If you are competitive, coming second here, coming second there, coming second here, you know, coming first where you can and coming second where you couldn't come first. And a close second in most places, you are nearer the price. And that's what we've seen. Um, it will be did not win the election. They don't like it when I say it, but I will say it all the same. Um, 
I wish him good luck in the in the tribunal. All right, Mayor. Um, I can understand um, the relationship between um, supporters of Itobi and Father Mbaka okay. because Father Mbaka's problem with Itobi preceded the last election. We've always had issues. I think um, he once accused Obi of not being supportive of the ministry, whereas the ministry have done things for them and trying to use the ministry when it was convenient for him. So he has always um, criticized Obi. It's just that now anybody that criticizes Obi gets attacked by the obedience. So it's a normal thing for them now to go for him because um, they see him as anti Obi. But um, I would just want to stress that um, BK is trying to raise OB to a level that he has not reached. Mm. The, the level that he has with the southern voters is different from what Muhammad Bari used to have when he used to have these 12, 12 million voters among the northerners. OB, was, OB is lucky that he came at a time that he represents the interests of different groups for different reasons. If the circumstances are different, it won't perform as good as that. In the 2019 election, it was the running mate to Atiku. He did not deliver those such votes for Atiku. So it's not as if there's something fantastic about Obi. No. It's just that he was lucky that he came at a time when, one, the young people were angry with the system. They needed a symbol that would represent their interests. And he, he was available. Out of all the competing people, he was the one that suits the kind of agenda that the youth wanted. So they adopted him. It's not as if that was why they voted for Obi, but they could not transmit, transfer that vote to the Labour Party. That's why, that's why the fact that Obi won in 12 states or 11 states and Abuja, he could not deliver states to the Labour Party. The platform where he contested, they won only one state. The governorship election. Yeah, the, the governorship election. Because those who supported him, the obedient movement, is different from their, their loyalty to the Labour the Party. party. Mm. They are not members of the party. They are not supporters of the party. They just saw B representing their interests, and they voted for him. Second, because of the Muslim Muslim ticket, a lot of clerics and um, um, church leaders felt that his need to fight against the Muslim Muslim ticket. Again, they saw OB as the best option for them to represent that interest of fighting against the Muslim Muslim ticket. So the that really then the third one is the Igbos. The the Igbo ethnic group has been complaining of marginalization, they have not produced the president and blah blah blah. So for the, they saw a candidate who is Igbo who is in the midst of things, who has a lot of support across the spectrum, and they gave him that, their votes on block. So, he will, because of circumstances, was able to do very well. So, B should not even deceive himself as a superstar. By the time he comes back in another four years, it's a different ball game altogether. Because the circumstances are different. Even in Lagos, those are the things that have the ethnicity, religion, those are the things that work for him. So it's not as if, so I can understand what Bada Mbaka is saying. Bada Mbaka told him a long time that he cannot be president. The way Nigeria is now, I can't see Obi being president. All right, that's it. Well, uh, gentlemen, there is a lot to take away from this uh, video. One of them is Father Mbaka saying, telling his fellow clergymen that if, if you do not have this gift of prophecy, ask God for it. I mean, with what we saw during the election with many uh, pastors, uh, saying a lot, how do we make sure that when we tell clergymen not to interfere in politics, not to prophesy about elections, we're not indirectly asking them not to lend their voices to national issues? Okay. No one, no one should say don't uh, profess about politics or don't even say anything about politics. Um, in some continents of the world, we've seen even church leaders become president. Look at Haiti, for example, you know. But coming out to claim that God spoke to you, when in your heart you knew you were lying. The Bible told us that um, 
there will always be false prophets. That, that day will come when we will see a deluge of false prophets. Nigeria is bursting at the seams today with false prophets. And I was um, reading the other day, uh, someone advised Khan to get involved. The rate at which pastors are conning people. The fact that they brought religion into it is what makes it worse. Because it is their own opinion that they are dressing up as prophecy. When you dress up your opinion as prophecy, you are not worthy of being called a pastor. You are just like a layabout. Because you are offending God and misleading his people. people. Misle you, are, you are misleading the shepherd. I mean misleading the flock. You are the shepherd misleading the flock. So, and that's not what we want to see. A lot of them were angry about this Muslim Muslim ticket. And because of that, they started telling us, oh, this is what will happen. Oh, that person will be arrested on uh, inauguration day. Oh, somebody who was vice president will be told to first become, uh, to accept to be president. Okay. And after accepting to be president, uh, after a while, he will hand it over to be absolute rubbish. Come on. In this age and time, you are telling us that will happen. Somebody will win an election. Another person will be told, oh yeah, take it. You. The man often dressed in black. Take it. And then the man often dressed in black will then surrender it to another person. Come on. I'm ashamed of people talking like this. It, 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 it revolts against my conscience to watch people ridicule my faith. In the manner that they have done. This is, I grew up in this, in this faith. My parents would wake us up as early as 5 a.m. to start praying. And people expect me to watch delusional pastors lying to people. So, uh, Father Mbaka said it the other day. That you have debased the sacrament. All that needs to be done is for you to ask for forgiveness. Because you chose this period of election to diminish yourself, to demystify yourself, to make yourself just before people as watchless as a sweet wrap on the floor. I never knew that that day would come, that people will willfully diminish themselves and their so-called calling. So that when people see them, you know the way you treat a sweet wrap on the floor. A sweet wrap on the floor it's just something there to litter the floor, unworthy. That's what they've turned themselves to. And it's really painful. It's really painful. When I speak in this manner, it's because I'm pained. How many times did we see Muslim clerics do some of these things that these guys did? Yes. You may accuse Ashiwaju that when he came up with Muslim, Muslim ticket, that it seemed unfair. You understand? He, you may... The average Christian may not say it publicly, but he feels some pain. But there are limits to these things. To then go to that, to the extent that they went, is what was wrong. You can feel that, oh, it's not right. Oh, no, no, no. We felt left behind by what Ashwajo had done. But the man was simply thinking about winning and nothing else. So, there are limits to everything. These guys never put their legs on the brake. Right? They were just saying what they learned. I'm happy that Mbaka, the Reverend Father, said it to them that, look, we, we disgrace the sacraments. Let's ask God for forgiveness. All right, Mayor, let me have your final ticket. Yeah, I, again, I want to agree with Father Mbaka. A lot of the so called pastors are mostly motivational speakers. They, 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 they'll be able to study the Bible and then they, they speak well, and they are able to now manipulate their congregation. But you see, for it to work, for them to continue to have the hold that they have on their congregation, they must claim they are doing things in the name of God. You understand? You see, human beings, because we believe that God is omnipotent, God is so powerful, and the God, is, God is the one that can provide our needs, when somebody comes to you and tells you that this is what God said, because you cannot see God, you believe that person because you think, oh, this is a man of God that God spoke to. But these people, God didn't speak to anybody. 
That is the reality. They, they didn't like the Muslim Muslim ticket. They wanted to be to win. And they deluded them themselves that if they keep saying something, it could happen. Instead of them to say, look, this church or members of this congregation, this is the person that we want to support. It is in their right to do so. But telling members of a congregation that God told you that this is the person that was going to win, all of them failed because God didn't speak to them. That is the reality. They spoke to themselves. Yes. They were the ones that decided on their own that what they want, they want it to happen. And they just believe that by wishing it to happen, it will happen. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Let's move on. Uh, it is said that when women help women,